you might have noticed that the shape we've got right now isn't exactly tiling sprites the way we want it to. We can change that using the sprite editor. I'm only going to go over the sprite editor very briefly in this demo, however there is a very good tutorial on it on Unity's YouTube page. Let's go back to our sprite shape profile, and from here select our sprite. The inspector window contains all of the import options for this sprite, as well as the sprite editor button. Let's open the sprite editor. I'm going to dock it to the top part of my window for now. Initially, the purpose of the sprite editor was to split documents containing multiple tiles into individual sprite assets. However, it can do a lot more now, and it can also work on single sprites. The sprite editor is a very useful tool when working with sprite shape. It allows us to determine how our sprites are rendered relative to the spline. There are two main options in the sprite editor which will be of particular interest to us when using sprite shape. The first of these are the border settings. You will notice them here, in the bottom sprite window, and you would have also noticed the four control points around the sprite. You can either define the borders numerically down here, or you can just simply drag the control points to where you want them to be. Right now I have dragged the left and right control points to separate the middle part of the bridge sprite. When this sprite is used in conjunction with sprite shape, what this means is that the only part of our sprite which is tiled is the middle section here. The left and right sections are called bookends. They are only rendered at the start and end nodes of our spline. Once you are done with the sprite editor, go to the top right and click apply. If we now go back into our scene view, you'll be able to instantly see how our shape has changed. You will also notice that our bookend sprites are currently not rendering at our end and start nodes. To fix this, let's go back to our sprite shape profile, and in the inspector window under control points, you have to enable the checkbox to use sprite borders. And just like that, we've got a new bridge sprite that tiles correctly. Now I want to show you how you can very easily add colliders to your sprite shapes. I think the best way to do this is by extending an existing scene made with sprite shape. Here I've prepared a simple 2D scene using the assets from the 2D game kit. All of the terrain you see in this scene, as well as some decorations, is made with the help of sprite shape. Let's bring in the bridge terrain we've created earlier into the scene and add a collider to it. I'm going to select my profile, and with it selected I can create a new 2D object, sprite shape. I can now go ahead and edit the bridge to look the way I want it to. All I'm doing here is adding more control points to the spline. The first thing I notice is that the bridge doesn't seem to be affected by the lighting in the scene. I can change this very easily in the sprite shape renderer just like I would with any regular sprite by assigning a different material to it. Just like this, the bridge is now affected by lighting. So, back to colliders. If I select my shape, and in the inspector window add component, I can use a 2D edge collider to automatically generate a collider for this shape. Right now it's a straight line. However, you will notice that in the sprite shape controller I now have an option to update collider. And if I click that, and zoom in, you will notice that the collider line, the green one, has adjusted itself to the shape of the sprite. You will also notice that it's not a perfect collider, and I want to edit it manually a little bit. For that I will untick to update collider, because otherwise it will be updated continuously. And then under the edge collider I will edit collider, and extend it just like this. Let's test the collision by bringing our character closer to this part of the scene. I'm going to select the character and the camera, and move them over to another part of the scene, and click play. As you can see, our collider works perfectly. 
Now, one other thing that Sprite Shape supports is having multiple sprites within the same angle range. By adding more than one sprite, you will be able to select which of them gets rendered per each segment of the spline. This way, you can add more variety to your environments. I'm going to demonstrate it by using a sprite shape I've prepared earlier, which contains two variations of moss. And I'm going to attach it to this terrain here. Once again, I'll create a new sprite shape. Adjust its position. And make it fit the object a little more. Once again, I'll make it affected by light. And now, with the node selected, I can change the sprite index. When I change the sprite index, you can see that the sprite being tiled following my node has changed. If I take a look at my moss shape, you can see I've got two sprites assigned for the same angle range. Using the sprite index, I can switch between these two sprites for each individual node on the spline. This can give you more flexibility in changing the appearance of your environments and adding variety 